want to do an introduction. Um, Sandra is my uh, one of my mentors, one of my best friends. She's an amazing woman. She's totally shifted how I view the world and myself. Um, she trained me in hypnosis. She trained me in Reiki. She's a, an amazing hypnotist and a, a Reiki master teacher. She had her baby that she wasn't even supposed to ha be able to have without medications <laughs> through hypnosis, had three brain surgeries this year, has beaten cancer twice, uh, is an amazing, amazing coach, and I've seen her help so many people transform. So I'm super glad to have you on today, Sandra. I know there's all kinds of stuff I probably missed. Um, about your background, but is there anything else that I should share with the audience? No, I, so I, I usually uh, introduce myself as an integrative life and business coach, but you make it sound way, way sexier than what you said. So uh, my experience, I've, I've been in so much personal development stuff, and when I met you, you just tied all these things together for me, and it was you know, the psychology, the spirituality, the health. And so truly, it is, you really do have an integrated practice. And um, it's, it's transformed the way that I teach personal development as well. Thank you. Well, you, you uh, in your recent speaking endeavors and your coaching, I have heard over and over and I've witnessed how you are integrating them in your own unique way. And that's really, you know, so honoring for me because it's opened me to look at things in even greater depth. And so I appreciate, you know, um, when the student passes the master teacher, right? And so I think we, we find that in many of our conversations that you're, you're often leading me in this wonderful path now, and I'm grateful for that. Well, I, I see you do one-on-one -on -one sessions, and I'm not so sure about, about that yet, but uh, I'm very, very honored by that compliment. So today we're gonna get into Reiki. Um, okay. Reiki, you know, energy healing is, for a lot of people, it's still a little bit woo-woo. Um, it doesn't, you know, how do we combine that into our, our Western philosophy so it makes sense? And for me, right. for me, it's understanding that at, at our atomic level, we're all just energy. The universe is made of energy. And so from that, talk to me about what Reiki is and how that applies to us. So um, my training actually came under what we call like a traditional uh, Reiki lineage. And so my master and master's master came right from Japan. And so when I first moved into energy work, that's how, the first form of energy work I was trained in was Reiki. And so um, it literally translates to universal life force energy, or so people tell me because I do not speak Japanese. <laughs> um, and it's not required to understand the energy and the background behind it. But over the years, I've certainly studied many more forms and teach many other forms of energy work. Uh, but Reiki's always been kind of near and dear to my heart because I think that the basic principles, there are five basic principles, and I stick to a pretty traditional method when I teach it because I feel like um, that's enough. The five basic principles that are covered um, when you live them as daily practice and then you have a deep understanding of chakra systems or energy centers in the body and how they relate to physical structural parts of the body. Because as you mentioned in the introduction, you know, I... You know, my background was actually, I was a research teacher is one of the things that I did. And um, my background in um, like marriage and family counseling and that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm really interested in how the brain works and how that works together with body systems. And so I train massage therapists and reflexologists on, you know, muscles and tendons and attachments mm -hmm. and bones and things. And so Western medicine is fascinating to me as well. Um, it's just that when we can open ourselves up to that and... Uh, a traditional philosophy, we find that we heal more rapidly. Yes. And, and, and we grow. Yeah. And so the way that I always teach it is our endocrine system controls the hormones that get dropped in our body based on what we think about, what we focus on, the language we use, our body language, all these different things. And so, you know, the best example is when you get stressed out, you drop cortisol, you know, and in your stomach and your stomach gets tight and you go into fight or flight mode. Well, that cortisol is really just an energetic signal. It affects how we digest food. And then the, the you know, residue from that cortisol stays in our stomach. It affects our digestion. And it affects everything that stems from that energy center. And so that's the simple way that I bring it back to the Western philosophy is how do we then use Reiki to flush that out? But first, let's, let's get into the five principles because if you can stay congruent and consistent in those five principles, those emotional patterns don't really develop very deeply do they right right so 
So as we first begin the process, it's about coming back to, to the, the daily practice, right? And coming back to mm -hmm. applying them as life presents itself. Because we don't stop living just because we start our Reiki journey. And so, um, in fact, some people just kind of start living when they start their Reiki journey. So what we do is, as we're part of that and we're moving through it, um, I think that the universe brings us exactly what we need. Um, so when we talk about universal life force energy, that life force energy, whatever you call that is, is insignificant to the process. Mm -hmm. So whether that's God, Allah, Buddha, Jesus, the oneness, science, nature, from whichever background you come, you can connect those. And when you, when you attach to, to those areas, you can start to explore the principles. So the principles are simple. Um, just for today, do not worry. And so when you commit to your journey, you will have opportunities that cross your path to do that. But we know that's a lower, slower vibration. I love what you teach and we teach um, about the love and fear spectrum, right? Yeah, so that's, I mean, so, that's kind of what these five principles are, right? Is how do we spend more time in love and less time in fear and worry? So, so do not, just for today, do not worry. Obviously, that's a lower, slower vibration. It has to do with locking into a fear base. Um, we love to tell the story that we, because we love people, we worry about them. Uh, but it's just part of the lie that we misunderstood for a long time uh, because worry does not come from love. It comes from a fear space. And if someone is facing challenges or opportunities to grow, if we can see them in that love place, then we can see them moving through that challenge. And when, uh, when we see them stuck or we see them challenged, um, that's, that's not love. Right. So I, I love the principle of just for today. I read uh, Dale Carnegie's book, I think, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And he says to live in day tight compartments. And so it doesn't seem it doesn't seem so dramatic to just stop worrying just for today. Right. And so all of these principles start with just for today and it takes it down into bite sized chunks. And, and just for today, I can give up worrying. Right. Right. And I tell people, you know, um, when people are working like, uh, for example, a 12 step program or something like that. They also work on a principle oftentimes of just for today. And, and people have told me when they're working through releasing addictions or different things, um, sometimes it's just this hour. If I can just stay clean just this hour, or sometimes it's just this minute. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the principles work the same way. Like just in this very moment, as long as I'm present, I do not worry. And I can remain in that space um, without that. Yeah, that, that thing we're worried about, it's, it's not here today, right? It's always seems to be in the future. And so we bring that pain into the, into the present, even though it's not really here. So we're either ruminating on the past or we're, we're focused on the future. And when we remain in the present in the, just for today, or in a more literal sense, just in this moment, then there is no worry. And, and the same way, just for today, there is, uh, do not anger, right? The second principle, there's no, there's no anger in the moment. If I'm present right here and now, I don't have to be in that fear space. If I stay in the love place, then there is no anger. Anger comes from fear and lack. Yes. It comes from worry and concern, right, of what could happen. But if we trust, if our faith is greater than our fear, then there, then there is no place for anger or worry or... Yeah, absolutely. All right, so those are the first two. What's the next one? Just, uh, uh, so just for today, do your work honestly. And I find that when I work with Reiki students, I very rarely attract dishonest people. So that's not the concern. But oftentimes it's, what is your work? Mm -hmm. What are you here to do? There's so many of us that don't really think about or focus on what's our purpose here. So as long as we're floating around earth school in this meat bag, as long as we're here, <laughs> you know, with this being having a human experience, what are we here to do? And when we can align, or as you and I talk about becoming congruent in that purpose, then, then life is really simple. It's when we get out of alignment, when we spend a lot of time doing stuff that's not really what we're here to do, you know? Yeah, of course. And this is, you know, right now I could be doing real estate stuff. I could be doing all kinds of stuff, but I know that this is my work, right? And, and so here I am and everything else can fall by the wayside because this is what lights me up. This is what brings me out of fear and, and into love even more and where I can flow. So I love that principle. Me too. And you do such an amazing job with that. So do your work honestly. So I pose to my students to think about what is your work um, while you're here in our school. And it could be your vocation. It could be what you do. Like, you know, I say I'm really blessed because what I do is what feeds the baby, right? So it, it pays the rent and it feeds my baby boy. And, and I feel good about that. But um, it's okay if your vocation isn't 
um, your purpose as long as you're taking the time to work in that purpose, mm -hmm. whatever that is along the way. Because sometimes we choose to generate our income through a vocation that doesn't feel in alignment with our purpose. And that's not makes us a bad person or we're not doing bad things. We're still probably serving our community in wonderful ways, but also working towards that purpose, working honestly towards that purpose that we're here for as we see it. Yes. And then number four is just for today, be humble and appreciative, right? Right. And, uh, you know, yeah, so. gratitude is such a big thing for me and appreciation. Um, and, and I really, you know, I talk about my antenna theory that we tune into vibrations and thought waves. And I think when you come from an ego space, when you're not humble, you try to have all the answers here and you're not open to the ideas coming to you, right? You're not going to tune into the channel that's going to bring you that. And so being appreciative and humble taps you into those thought patterns that opens the way to the universe, right? Well, and I love to talk to students too about the idea that when we talk about being humble, Oftentimes we want to think about that like if someone would compliment something that we would do to help them and they would say and they would say, Oh, Sandra, I just feel so much better. Thanks for the coaching session. And and it would be easy to be humble to say, Oh, well, you did all the work, right? Like you made the choice, you did it. That's easy to be humble. But what about when that same client or you know, coaching client might come back to you and say, Well, uh, actually, Sandra, you're not doing a very good job because I'm not feeling very happy today. And and to also allow our humility, our ability to be humble and let that be theirs as well. Understand that we can be humble in our role. Um, and that just as that we are not responsible for others' happiness and we can't control that, we can certainly set them up for it, we can support them. We also um, must be humble in our response to their displeasure in our interaction. Yes, absolutely. All right, and there's one more principle. What's the last one? Final principle, yeah, feel kindness and compassion for all. And again, I tend to attract really kind students, but it's that compassion element. And so when, when people talk to you about compassion, what do they usually think that means, Nicholas? Um, maybe the golden rule, treating others like they treat themselves. Mm -hmm. So they think, they think it's a lot about being empathy or in treating people as, as they want to be treated. Oftentimes, though, I find that it goes beyond that. A deeper level of of true compassion that we talk a lot uh, about in the course is the idea of um, having empathy without becoming part of the drama. Mm -hmm. And it, as coaches, we know that's really important because in the moment we can, we can stay very present with our client. We can be really good. But then at the end of the day, when we've hung up from all the video chats and we put it away, um, can we trust in the universe to guide them in their place and not to be come tied up in whatever it is they've been challenged with or given opportunity to grow? through at this time and that compassion is like not becoming part of their drama instead have the empathy and help them through provide this stuff. and i love the analogy you use you say you know someone's in a boat and their boat's sinking it's not going to help them for you to get in the boat with them right you have right. to stay dry and, and stable on your boat and um yeah. and and for me and, and also like i just i love the word unconditional and so you can watch somebody do something to you or treat you in a certain way and, and not change who you are, not change that place of love that you come from. And I think, you know, that lesson keeps hitting me all the time and I'm watching myself grow into this place where you could say whatever you want to me and I'm just gonna stay in this this amazing place. In the love place. Yeah, I'm, I'm here and, and I'm committed to it and it's it's been life changing. Yeah, why would you wanna leave? Yeah, right? there's, no, there's no reason to, no matter what happens. And, um, you know, Tony Robbins talks about staying in a beautiful state and. And I think for me, it's just the, the term unconditional, unconditional joy, unconditional love. Yeah. So one of the one of the areas of this the Reiki um, study that a lot of people are unfamiliar with, but but if I could tell them briefly, of course. Was, is that there are, there are if you choose to go through traditional Reiki and study traditional Reiki, there are like four levels, and the first level is really about self love and self care. The second level is about continuing to manage your own energy as you begin to work with the energy of others. And then there's Reiki Master, which is where you begin working with distance work and you remove the limitations, you know, physical, structural, mental, emotional, or spiritual, any limitations you may have thought Reiki held. But then the place in which Nicholas is now is the Reiki Master teacher. And that's that level where you start to think about how will you share this message with the world? Yeah. And one of the things that I wanted to share about you is how impressed I am that as we're moving through this journey together, that you have chosen when I asked you, okay, 
how would you like to teach your message? Tell tell me what you tell them what you told me. So I, I just had this idea, and I've wanted to do this for a while, is to go practice it, to go live it in the world, and to do a mission trip with Reiki Healing. And you know, we've lined up some pretty cool stuff in Brazil in February to take a group of students um, who are going to go through Reiki one and Reiki two. And then we're going to go practice it in the jungle villages and we're going to go heal people. Um, and so that's something I'm and super excited about. I love that every student I've worked with as they come up on the curriculum part of it, like how will I teach it? It's been so them in their path, but for them, your path's so great for you because you love travel and you love service and you love bringing people together and groups together and i just think it's so beautiful what you've chosen for yourself and i'm really honored to be a part of that yeah we're gonna have a blast but let's let's talk a little bit about how we use reiki for healing so we talked about the uh you know the emotional part of it uh and and that's spiritual as well but you know when someone says they, they come to you and they have pain or they have a health issue how do we use reiki to, to help them so uh, you know, obviously, we are not going to sum it up in a 30-minute webinar because there's hours and hours to sure. pastor and student. But, but the short version of it is that Reiki works in all ways. So um, there's there's an old cliche that says, you know, Reiki knows where Reiki goes. And so sometimes we don't even have to identify the source um, or, you know, or the symptom, but but the, the energy will flow naturally in healing. So people that have studied other forms of healing, like people who have done laying in the hands or other forms of healing along the way, um, prayer healing, uh, group healing, things like that. They're, they're familiar with the idea that when you open yourself up to the space of healing, that the practitioner can then guide and move the energy as they, as they assist you. So in Reiki 1, um, which is really how I like to work with people, I like to empower them, teach a man to fish, right? I like to teach them how to move their own energies and manage their own energies. And primarily in the beginning phases, we work uh, with uh, the chakra systems or the energy centers in the body. And in traditional Reiki, we focus on the seven major chakra systems in the body. So, you know, yoga is so popular this mm -hmm. day. Most people have experienced Savasana at the end of their yoga practice. And maybe the uh, yoga master teacher has talked them through um, the chakra before and they're familiar. They don't even know they're familiar. Right. Um, but we work a lot with those systems with my students in training. And we find that that's one of the most basic and simple forms to do dramatic healing work physically structurally as well as mentally emotionally or spiritually so so that might um that makes sense to me but let's let's use an example so let's say there's a root there's a let's talk about the root chakra so it's it's at the base of the spine and there's uh, mental and emotional patterns that create hormone responses that store in the area of the root chakra at the base of the spine and so if you yep. live in fear about certain things so each chakra stands for something right and the root is right. your money, career, taking care of yourself. And so if you have worries about that, you then drop hormones into that energy. And then there's a physical structural component that goes with that. So what's the physical structural component of the root chakra? The bones. So the root chakra is the foundational system. So just like for caveman, it would be like food, water, shelter. In today's society, it's mostly people's um, use of their career or their finances to provide those things for themselves. Obviously, we know that's not true in certain areas sure. of the world um but but most of the most of the folks that you and i coach um it's about career and finances for for those people and um and it has to do with the bones the real physical structural of the body and it was an interesting story because um early in in my practice um when i was a uh, master becoming master teacher uh we had someone refer to us a chiropractor referred to us a uh, client of theirs that had been through the hospital and they had done lots of x-rays and looked at these bones and they could not figure out why these bones weren't healing and mm -hmm. they had tried uh oh lost ya well I'm gonna tell a story while you are frozen I don't know if that's you or me um so when I quit my job and I was coaching wrestling and just trying to make it in real estate, um, my muscles and my, my joints started breaking down really bad. And I was super healthy at the time. And like I was eating healthy and I couldn't figure out why. And it, the emotional around that, uh-oh, lost her. The emotional patterns around that, that created this breakdown in my body and it had nothing to do with my diet or sorry i'm finished my story uh 
it had nothing to do with my diet or the way I took care of myself, but my body was breaking down because of my emotional state, and that was tied to my root chakra. So if you want to go ahead and finish your story since you cut out. Uh, sorry about that. So, yeah, so what happened is um, I, I really, honestly, when they sent the client to, to me and my, my um, master teacher, I, I literally thought to myself, I have no idea how to, how to do that. Like, I don't know that Reiki can heal a bone. Like, I, sure, I had used it to release cancer. That made sense to me, right? That's soft tissue. And I know that our cells change that often, right? But I was thinking, how do we do the bone? But I, I just opened myself up to the idea that it would work with root chakra. And I, I went through the practice that I've been trained in. And as I did that, we had the hospital continue to show us the results. And this gentleman's bone completely healed completely after they had tried everything they knew in this specialized location. And it was a huge eye opener for me because, um, what, I, when I could see the, the things that could be done, it was like the last like limitation I mm -hmm. held physically, structurally that I thought it was absolutely fascinating to me. I was so honored that the universe brought me that opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's a cool story. So, and I know you have like a huge list of stories like that. And, and one thing, <laughs> One thing that I always say is modern Western medicine doesn't understand the, the two things that affect our health. And that's number one is emotions. And number two is our diet. And of course there's other things, but our emotional patterns, right? Create that situation. And when they go in and they read it, they can't read the energy of that situation. So they don't understand why we're not healing, but it's always that mental emotional pattern that is keeping us there. And, and if we come from that love space, you can heal anything, right? Your, your bones can regenerate. Um, and yeah. it's, and it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. And, and in fairness to, to those, uh, in Western medicine that get a poor rap, because I have some very good friends that are surgeons and doctors. And, and what I know is that, um, there's more and more research supporting it. They simply have been looking for the research for a long time. But now that they've had more studies and they've been doing more of that, I feel that you'll see more and more of that. In fact, most every hospital will allow a Reiki master to come in during a procedure or pre and post surgery. Um, and they're very open to that now. And so many of the folks that I've trained have been invited in. I've been invited into hospice centers, hospital rooms and so on. And they've been very open to that. So um, understanding that, that sometimes it's part of the mystery, um, but, but the research shows them that people are increasing their health at a more rapid rate when they incorporate the Reiki. So you'll be surprised how many clinical institutes um, are opening up to that. And I think you and I are going to have a mission to uh, speed that process up even more. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, so we talked about the root chakra and then it goes up, you know, the sacral solar plexus, heart, throat, and then your third eye and your crown. And those are yeah. the, those are the major chakras and each of them have a physical structural component an emotional component and a spiritual component tied to them. Right. Yep. Every one of them. And so, you know, in more, um, what we call like modern energy work, people will associate stones or oils or things with those chakras and they'll get additional bonus results from that. Traditional Reiki doesn't hold to that. Uh, although obviously you and I have had training in that I've had extensive training in using those things, other forms of energy work together. So, um, but in traditional Reiki itself, um, they work primarily with the chakras and the five principles and working a lot one-on-one -on -one with master and teacher to see how um, you can apply it to your own life and then begin to help to work with the energies of others, uh, whether it be present or distance healing as you move through Reiki 3 and master. Yeah, and I remember when I first first started this, someone would tell me that they were having an issue and it, either it was their health or it was in their life and they would say, you know, oh, my shoulder hurts. And I would say, oh, I, I know what's going on with you. Are you having this emotional pattern? They would go, how the how the hell did you know that? Right. Or they would have, you know, I'm really worried about my job and my relationship. I go, Oh, I bet that's showing up in your body in this area, isn't it? And they go, how the hell did you know that? Um, so it's, it's such a cool tool. It's been so fun to learn. I do have to say that mind body connection was my favorite part in the Reiki journey because Reiki came to me when I was releasing cancer for the first time. And so, um, it was fascinating to me, the story that my body would tell about, uh, old patterns or thought patterns that had been stored and as I would release them how the body would heal so quickly and again because I was being tested every month I could see those results as they were coming through so I became very intrigued by the mind-body connection work and I love to teach that sort of work and um, allow people to be their own healers and understanding that when they change the thought then they change the feeling and it all works together.
Yeah. Yeah. What a journey. And then, so we're not going to get too far into it, but hypnosis, when you pair that with Reiki, uh, you know, I always, I always teach that you can move energy in your hand and make your hand feel warm just by thinking about it. And just like that, you can move energy through any part of your body just by thinking about it. And under hypnosis, it's even more powerful. And so yes. we use hypnosis to flush it out and then we reprogram the emotional pattern that sets that in there, right? Absolutely. So that's always been such a blessing for me to have the privilege of working in an integrative practice because I know that when we're making changes and we're releasing things that no longer serve us or bringing in energies that do, that if we're combining the mentally emotional with the physical, structural, and the spiritual, that it just so quickly, exponentially increases. And, and every client can attest to that and how quickly that happens for them. And everybody knows that, that if they think of one of their most challenging times of their life and they've survived it, because here they are, and if they're healthy and well, they can quickly say, well, this is what I was doing. I got, I got good about what I was putting in, on, and around my body. This is what I was doing. I was giving myself these thoughts, feeding myself these thoughts with regularity. Um, and the beauty of hypnosis is it goes beyond willpower and it gives you yes. an opportunity to get really congruent with the conscious and subconscious, which I know you talk a lot to people about. Um, and, and when those come together along with that, you know, divine connection, that spiritual truth, whatever that is, science, nature, you know, as we said before, God, all of Buddha, whatever it is for them, when you bring those all together, then you're then congruent. Um, so if there's, if there's a misalignment in your value system or your belief system, with the practices that you're using, they're not going to stick, yes. you know, it has to align with your truth. And so Reiki affords that opportunity for all belief systems to work um, comfortably with it. And, and the hypnosis is such a huge advantage. Yeah. And I love that it transcends religion, right? You just said it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And, and, I, and I believe a lot of times religion is a creation of the ego and, and maybe not always, but you know, I'm different than you because I believe differently than you. And, and Reiki says, no, we're, you know, we're all, we're all energy and we all have this capacity to experience love and, and to be healthy and, and healthy is our natural state. And it's, it's only fear patterns that create an unhealthy environment in our body. So Nicholas might say that if we just align with love, then <laughs> it all comes together. That's what I would say. That's exactly what I would say. Absolutely. And I, and I know you would yeah. too. Um, so yeah, let's tell people, you know, next steps. I'm sure there's a lot of people interested uh, and what you have to say. And every time I tell these stories, people are like, how do I learn more about this? So, um, you know, we talked a little bit about our Brazil trip. I think that's probably the, the most obvious thing. Absolutely. So, you know, I've, I've had a practice for a long time where I train people individually and I work in groups. Um, but one of the things that I feel really good about my journey, not that I would not continue doing that, but I feel really good about the idea that, um, as we talked about, um, doing your work honestly and being in alignment with your purpose, um, I love serving as teacher and coach and all those things. But I also know that I, I find myself with every birthday remembering that I'm moving more into the category of sage. And in that, um, no, mo no, no longer the maiden or the mother, but into that sage space of my life. And I understand that part of what I do is um, I teach people to assist people in this. And so I've been really impressed with the masters and master teachers that have come to me recently and I feel very comfortable referring to them and each of them with a little bit different way of sharing the message and how they do that. And so like Nicholas, I love the mission trip because you want to serve and you want to give in your way of doing that. And so for example, you know, when people want to learn, I could very easily be like, oh, you want to go do an intensive, you want to apply it, you want to make it happen. Nicholas is your man. And so what, you know, what they do is they find a really great um, master teacher to work with. Now, I've had a tendency up until now to not be very pleased with some of the trainings that happen at the hospitals. As I told you, a lot of hospitals are opening up to Reiki only because they typically bring someone in and in a one day training, they're like, okay, there you go. You've mastered level one, which is self care and self healing. Who masters that in a half a day? Right. Um, or they'll move them on and be like, okay, now you're at level two, time to start working with other people's energies. And they haven't had time to really master their own development. So without, without judgment, everyone's gonna learn in their own way. I have um, always felt that um, my master teachers that I've trained do have a really good sense of curriculum and what it takes to know when their student has reached that place and is ready for what we call attunement and to move to the next level of healing. And for everybody, it's gonna be different. Sometimes they need to deep, more deeply connect with their, their God and sometimes they need to um, spend some time really creating new systems and structures for their body. 
and whatever it is, you know, finding the right master teacher for you. Not that the hospital programs would be bad, but I think that if you really want a deeper journey and the people that you would tend to attract, Nicholas, I would think they would be better served with a master that's going to, you know, personalize that to them and really assist them in how does it apply to their family or their business or their own personal healing. Yes. Course. Yeah, absolutely. And so we can definitely uh, provide that. And and the mission trip is a great way to do that. And, and I also want to talk about our intensive retreat that we have coming up because that might be a very solid foundation for someone that's going into Reiki. So Sandra, if you want to tell a little bit about the whole purpose of our four day intensive retreat. Yeah. So, well, what had happened is we had been asked to talk about this concept of aligning. And so when Nicholas said, I, I really am being called to talk to people about how do they bring the subconscious, the conscious together? How do we work with um, the ego instead of against it? How do we keep it congruent with their body and their physical structural self? And talking about that, I was really, I felt so honored that you invited me to join you in presenting those, those ideas in um, the course that we called Align with Love. And as we did that, what we noticed is that all the class was really helpful. We taught mm -hmm. it at first as a three hour, and then sometimes we taught it as a one hour class. What we realized is that if people are really going to make changes, they're going to stick. They're going to need a pretty intensive process to do that. And that's when the concept of the intensive retreat came up and the idea of really pulling yourself out of your everyday life and plopping yourself down and using these techniques that we've been spending the last half an hour of your life talking about, um, about how do we stay in love and how um, do we keep ourselves away from the absence of love or fear? Uh, how do we stay congruent with our conscious and subconscious mind? So that particular uh, retreat is an opportunity to work with the mental emotional. So there'll be some hypnosis and self-hypnosis training so people can learn to manage their own mind, retrain their brain. It'll also have a lot of elements of the Reiki curriculum in it. So it's going to allow people to align with their own chakra systems. Um, the beautiful part is that Nicholas came up with some awesome ideas about some prep work, right? To really do a detox and cleanse and come in as your best, healthiest and highest self. And then once you're there to take that, to move, um, to move through the intensive work we're going to do with some follow-up mentoring and coaching, um, courses afterwards. So just really, a, an intensive opportunity to prepare yourself for change come and experience the change in a safe environment with lots of different modalities working together at once, physically, structurally, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and then moving from there into um, to that follow-up coaching in the process to assimilate it back into real life when you get home. Yeah, so the idea is that, you know, whatever's stopping you right now from moving forward from having your best life, it's just an emotional fear-based pattern. And so we want to get you down, um, you know, in a very small group where we can pick apart those patterns and the subconscious programs that run and totally change your life, right? Totally take a jackhammer to all those old patterns, give you new emotional patterns that serve you, that create the life you want, that keep you moving forward and keep you in that emotion of love and, and just give you such an extreme emotional event around everything that you want that you're, you just leave a totally different person in a totally different space. And I think that's really only possible in, in that small group setting. So if you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna leave a link below to our landing page or you can message either Sandra or I um, to learn more about that journey as well. And who wouldn't want to align with love? Come on, that sounds amazing. Like every, me, pick me, I wanna do that. One of the things that we have decided though is the course will be a small course and so we're capping it. Um, and so um, when you reach out, uh, you're gonna wanna be timely. Um, not that there won't be others coming up in the future, but, but in order to really get the intimate experience we need, it really needs to be capped. So securing your position quickly, if that's something you wanna do, would probably be wise. If you're feeling moved, that you'd like to start the new year with new patterns, release those extreme emotional events that kept you stuck up until now, that might be a really good package. Might be a really smart way to go. So intensive retreat and then uh, Reiki Brazil mission trip. Uh, so you give some good options. Otherwise, they can follow both of us. We're going to keep putting out great content. Um, I know I have a couple speeches coming up. I'm going to put on my social media as well. And I'm sure you do too. So. Yeah. And yeah. I, I will see you at your hypnosis certification class in a couple of weeks. So, and also, yeah, besthypnosistraining.com. Get... Come on out. Nicholas if... is going to help us out. He's going to be present for that training. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. If you think you want to retrain your brain, come to that too. Yes. Thanks. So, if anyone's interested in that, definitely reach out. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sanderson.